it on right now. It should be on. Strike Tracker Live. Good evening and welcome to the District 6 semifinals here at Homer Center High School. We're trying this a second time. Uh, Isabel um, rolling with me here. Joe Rhodes bringing the action here in this Class A semifinal between the home Homer Center Wildcats and the visiting Bishop Carroll Huskies. I want to quickly thank tonight's sponsors, the Bishop Carroll High School, uh, Bishop Carroll High School and the Lady Wildcats Association here at Homer Center bringing this game to you wherever you may be. So make sure you thank those folks. Isabel, uh, all that we said there, I guess it was just a warm-up for us, but uh, now we're live out there. Uh, folks can hear you. Um, should be a good game, and as we said, uh, Homer looking to go to a third straight district championship game. Yeah, they definitely have been working really hard these past couple of days, I mean, in between games and then before that because they're really trying to get out there a third time. And hopefully for – Homer, of course, they have to take care of business here tonight, but a, a third time, possibly a charm, uh, finishing runner-up the last two years. Of course, um, a lot of those players, as we kind of said yeah. earlier on, that wasn't on the air, uh, part of that first district championship game, also a part of uh, this team as well. So plenty of experienced players for big game action and tonight uh, no different, as Bishop Carroll will begin this game with service. It'll be number 15, Alicia Heinrich with the serve. Chance by Faven dropping it in and, oh, keeping it going. But, nope, that's going to be two hits and first point over to Homer Center. So, Isabel, this is your first uh, crack at uh, on-air live action? It is. It's the, everybody thinks it's hard. It's really not. If you like sports like I do, it's just sort of uh, read and react. You kind of see what you, uh, what you already know and yeah. try to share it with the folks out there. But glad to have you aboard. Yeah. And a kill there. I believe that was Ashton Kerr, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. And they, it's a great start to the game. Yeah, you always want to get off to, I think, a good start in set number one. I think that's, again, kind of common sense. But really, yeah. you don't want to find yourself in a hole, especially come playoff time. Yeah. Dug out by oh, Williams. Okay. Nice job there. Set by Aron. Kerr again. And that one just a bit long. Point two, Bishop Carroll. But a nice dig. And uh, we saw... Megan Williams with a lot of nice uh, digs in that game on Monday against Juniata Valley. Not afraid to put the body on the line. You love to see that, especially come playoff time. Serve across there by Mary Golden of Bishop Carroll. Free ball card knocked down, but on the side of Bishop Carroll. Give credit there to um, Ali Zabo, the middle hitter for Bishop Carroll. Um, she got a hand on that, but it kind of landed uh, on her side of and as a result, point to Homer Center. So a three to one advantage now. Sorry about that. Got to get this score updated. Well, Center kind of falling down there. Just has to lunge at it. That's a tough play. Kind of lost her footing. And Homer with the point. It's kind of bad luck there. Three Heritage Conference teams want to mention in action here still in district playoffs. West Shimokin. Uh, part of that uh, two-way bracket, they will face the top-seeded Phillipsburg Osceola squad on Thursday. And then tonight, oh. that ball dropping in on the side of Homer Center, point to Bishop Carroll, service back to their side. So side out, Bishop Carroll. Um, but uh, Portage, also one of the newcomers to the Heritage Conference, they're in action here, I believe, tonight against the number one seed, West Branch. So, And the service into the net. Isabel, I don't know, were you here for the uh, the quarterfinal game on uh, Monday? Yes, I was. And that was kind of the bugaboo of Juniata Valley. A lot of times they would get that point, they'd break through, but then put the service directly into the net yeah. and give it right back. And that's something you got to avoid. And that one stays in. Nice job there by Fabin to kind of float it in and drop it on the line and point now to Homer Center. But there you go. You know, you got to, I call them unforced errors, those kind of self-inflicted wounds, something that Bishop Carroll will have to, try to uh, manage here tonight.
And another think, kill. Or who was that there? Uh, Megan Scott? Williams. Yeah, Williams. One of those uh, players, I, I said this kind of uh, pretty much all night long, that they kind of go as she does. When she's when she's on, they're on. And as you can see right now, the Wildcats up to a 7-2 to two advantage here in the first set. Dug out, but Kerr unable to corral it and point to the Huskies side out. Back to serve for Bishop Carroll will be number 11, Ali Zabo, the middle hitter, sophomore, 5'9". Williams again, reflected but saved. Chance now for the Huskies, free ball cross. David, nice job there, but a great dig. Got a point, two homer, double hit. And uh, give credit, Mary Golden's been uh, doing a good job. She's listed as a setter, but a couple really big digs here early on by number seven of the Huskies. And they will take a timeout here as Homer has taken an eight to three lead. What have you seen here so far, Isabel? I think uh, Homer pretty sharp. They had a couple errors, I think, in that quarterfinal game that they're not seeing early on in this one. Yeah. Um... Earlier on in that game, though, uh, Juniata Valley did dig themselves a big hole, and it was definitely going to be hard for them to get back at it. So ended up pretty quick game for Homer. Seems to be that way now, too. Yeah, I'm the master of saying things that are probably common sense. Mm -hmm. uh, I think in these big games, you want to eliminate those unforced errors, the service in the yeah. net, you know, uh, communication breakdowns where you'll see a ball land between two players. Those are the things you really want to limit come playoff time because the competition – it's as steep as you're going to see all year, so you can't really help your opponent. And you know, Homer did that early on against Juniata Valley, but you saw them clean it up as that went on. But certainly, uh, doing a better job here early on to avoid. Yeah, and a lot mistakes. of those are also mental mistakes. Right. It's all in the head, and if you can get past that, then you're pretty good there. Yeah, excellent point. And good volley out of this timeout mm. by Bishop Carroll. Rohn's going to give it to Williams, and a dig, save, almost, but into the net. When you, uh, when Rohn's passing the ball well and she can find Williams at her peak like that, when she's, you know, at her apex of her swing, and she's tough to stop, and that ball comes rocketing off of her yeah. hand. And a few, uh, few liberos uh, around can dig that one out. Nine to three advantage here for the Wildcats. Make it ten to three. Big thing in volleyball I always pay attention to is how does your team respond coming out of the timeout? And since that Bishop Carroll timeout, two consecutive points for the Wildcats who've gotten a, or gained a seven-point lead here in set number one. Not the response you probably want, but yeah. still plenty of time. Mm -hmm. Judging the chair there, pointing in the wrong way for a second, but getting the correct point to Homer. So now three straight points coming out of that timeout. Ooh, knocked down. A good job there by Carroll. Number nine and number 15, uh, Emily Olnick. And number 15 is Alicia Heinrich. Building a nice wall there to block Megan Williams kill attempt. A much needed point there to stop the Homer Center run. 11 to 4. Served by Costco. Yeah. Oh. And somehow, <laughs> some way. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Right there, you saw two homer players thinking that pass was to them and uh, still kind of looping it over the uh, the net there and dropping it in where no one was. So a point to homer. Got a little lucky there, but as I said, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Williams with the serve now. And a kill by number 15. That's Alicia Heinrich. And you saw right there that Bishop Carroll, when they're passing the well and they're getting the, they're receiving the service well, they're able to get it to their hitters, and they have some taller, you know, skilled hitters on this team. Uh, but the, you know, giving them opportunities, you see a lot of free balls here early on in this first set for Bishop Carroll. But here another opportunity 
And sure enough, a point. Kill there by number four, Olivia Gregg, the freshman. Not a lot of seniors on this team at first glance, uh, Isabel. No. I think there's just one. Nope, there's two. Three? Three, yeah. If you heard my broadcast on, on Monday, not a math guy. Number's <laughs> not my thing. Uh, another point, so make it six. Seven, rather, excuse me, to 12. The Huskies on a little run of their own now. That one out of play. Be out. It's so tough when you're in that back row like that. That yeah. ball's coming on you so quickly. What Decide whether or not to play it. And a smart decision there by number four, Fairbanks, to uh, just let that one go. 13 to seven and right back to the Huskies after that serve is too long. Number 15, Alicia Henrik, up to serve. One close, but Williams is going to play it. Gets it to Arone, who found Fabian, but a good dig again by Carroll. Chance now. Kerr blocked down, a big block. The defense showing up here in the last few plays for Bishop Carroll. That was number 11 with the block, Ali Zabo. Again, a young team here. Most of the names that we've called here early on, Isabel, have been uh, freshmen, sophomores. And they're a little bit of a miscommunication, that ball kind of in between Williams and Fairbanks, and Fairbanks lunging for it, not able to play it. Now it's a 13 to 10 game in favor of the Wildcats here in the semifinal. The winner will advance to the championship game in Altoona and we'll play either West Branch or Portage. And another point. And a timeout by Homer Center, who had a pretty sizable lead, but it's now shrunk to two. I'm trying to think of what uh, the, the largest gap there was, Isabel. Um, but, you know, give credit to uh, the Huskies. Got off to a little bit of a slow start. They're passing it better now as a result, and it's uh, helping them close the gap yeah. now down by just two. And their attitudes are definitely helping. They're getting themselves back up. That's a big part of it. Yeah, you watch body language, too, a lot of times. It's it's important, I think, not to get too high, not to get too low. And, you know, at, f at first, you know, you saw a couple Huskies players getting a little bit frustrated. But as they started kind of finding their game, and, you know, passing is so crucial in volleyball to serve, receive. And when they were able to receive it well, get it to their uh, setter, and then get a good pass to their hitters, um, you know, they've shown what they can do. That wasn't happening early on in this set. Now as they've been able to kind of get the ball to those outside hitters and get it to their setter, after the serve, uh, the success has followed. So, yeah, you definitely just got to slow it down and let it go. Yeah, let the play slow down, indeed. And the defense, big part of this comeback as well. Into the net. For now, up. Oh. Four hits. Number 12, Hannah Roan, up to serve for the Wildcats. Yeah, Roan, a big part of the win on Monday. Some Excellent passing. I think I really only remember one pass that uh, wasn't just on the dot. She's been great here in these playoffs so far. Of course, Homer with a bye in the first round. This is just their second uh, game in District 6 play. Yeah, she's definitely had to step it up this year after losing their previous setter, uh, Macy Sardo, last year. And right there, right on cue, you talk about her and she makes a big play. Yeah. Able to just push that one in the middle of the defense where no one was, and a point to Homer. 15 11 now the score. Roan back to serve. Nice downward spin on that one. Blocked. I think that was a combination of Fabin and number 14, uh, Grace, uh, Grace Frazier. Mm -hmm. They have her name backwards, it's fun. On yeah. this roster, it looks like her name would be Fraser Grace. I doubt it. That's the the case. <laughs> Everybody else's name is the right way except hers. If I wasn't familiar with this team, imagine if I was like a Bishop Carroll announcer. I'd probably yeah. just be out here thinking her name was Fraser. <laughs> and that one, off the hands of the libero, 
tough one to recover while it goes into the bleachers. Yeah, but sure enough, you still saw Williams trying to track yeah. that one down. She uh, just doesn't quit. No, she doesn't. So 16 to 12. Carroll with the serve, dug out by Williams. Aron to Fabin, right down the middle of that defense. And point to Homer. And, you know, not to beat a dead horse, but I said uh, in that game on Monday that not only does this team go as Williams does when you see her kind of clicking on all cylinders, the team goes, but I think the same could be said about Fabin. Definitely. They've all, all of the hitters have worked really hard to put them up. I missed that one, Isabel. What happened there? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure either. I started hearing my own voice in this, and I wasn't talking, so yeah. I was quite confused. But uh, point two, two points to the Wildcats here, so I missed one somewhere. 18 to 12, the score. Chance. A good pickup by Kerr. And that one mm -hmm. into that wall, but on the side of the Huskies. And give credit, though, they're, they're setting up quickly that uh, front line of the Huskies. That time it was number 11 and number 9, uh, number 9, Emily Olnick, number 11, the aforementioned Ali Zabo, but Williams, just too good. Yeah, it's definitely crucial to try and get that wall up to stop her, but not always going to work. And I, I love this timeout by Bishop Carroll. You got two consecutive points by Homer. You don't want to let this run go on too long. Yeah. You know, we call them coaches' timeouts. Whenever you're able to call that timeout and it makes, a, you know, an impact coming out of it, uh, that can really, uh, you know, yeah, trying to freeze steer, the momentum. Yeah, steer the tide. And um, Homer kind of looking a little bit more like they did uh, early on in that set. And so the Huskies calling a timeout to try to slow their momentum. But up by eight, it was close to as few as two points there a moment ago, Isabel. But Homer playing like a team that's been there and done that, uh, rebuilding that lead up another just five points away from winning set number one. Yeah, you can definitely tell they're beginning to become more confident as the game goes on really helping him out. You know, I wondered in that game on Monday, too, since they got a bye in the first round and their opponent, Juniata Valley, had a playoff game under their belt, you know, would you see rust from Homer? And you have to wonder whether or not some of those mistakes in that quarterfinal game was a result of just not getting kind of that game action that your opponent did because uh, they're looking a lot more kind of succinct here tonight. And, uh, you know, you're seeing those uh, unforced errors a lot uh, less frequently. Yeah. Chance now, free ball across. Kerr with the dig. Chance Williams push across, knock oh. down. Oh, and you can see uh, on the face of number nine on the side of the uh, Huskies, Emily Olnick. She thought she had a chance of knocking that one down. She knew what Williams was doing, but William, Williams getting just enough uh, spin on the ball, drop it on the side of Bishop Carroll. So 21 to 12 now. That lead growing for Homer Center. Another kill by Faven. Right past the defense. You gotta wonder if another timeout's coming here for Bishop Carroll. Wildcats just three points away now. Another kill by Faven. And you saw what happened right there. That's what's kind of plagued uh, the Huskies here in this first set. When they're getting that dig, that one just kind of came just too far across to the Homer Center side. And as a result, you know, Fabin, all she really had to do was hit that one straight down because yeah. no one was in place. But that, uh, you know, getting the ball to your setter, so important. And how you how you defend the serve, so important. And that's, yeah. I think, been the bugaboo here so far for Bishop Carroll. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's the <laughs> Not getting the uh, ball in a good place. And Homer Center now just one point away. It's set point here in game number one of this District 6 semifinal. Winner will go to Altoona on Saturday and again play either another Heritage Conference team, Portage, the fourth seed, or West Branch, the top seed in this Class A bracket. And that is out. So the Wildcats. After a, a nice little rally there by Bishop Carroll to close the gap uh, to two points. I believe it was, was it 14 to 12. Did they go on to score 11 straight points? I'm curious. Yeah. 
I think they might have. Mm -hmm. Have to go back and look. But uh, it was a two-point game, Isabel, and then they just kind of ran, uh, ran, excuse me, ran away and hid. Uh, did the Wildcats? Yeah, and got a nice first win. To start them off for the rest of the sets. <clears throat> so the home squad, and I should mention too, I, I, this is uh, the bracket so far been chalk. All the top seeds, the final four remaining teams are the top four seeds. Uh, Homer Center, the number two seed, of course. And we were talking about this on Monday, too. It just tells you how good the Heritage Conference is. Um, that, you know, the way that's formatted, the top four teams go and play at the KCAC in the Heritage Conference Championship. You have the two semifinals, of course, before the championship game. And Homer Center, not a part of that this year. So that means there were four teams that finished ahead of the Wildcats in the Heritage Conference, yet here they are on the verge of going to a district championship game. It just shows you how talented uh, the Heritage Conference was this year. Yeah, and I think them being a bit discouraged about not being able to go to Heritage for three times made them a little more ambitious to move on for District 6. Yeah, that's an excellent point because, you know, this is a team that's played in big games and <laughs> they're going to want to still play in as many as they can find here uh, going down the stretch. A lot of seniors on this squad and, and uh, you know, not getting to play in that Heritage Conference Championship and defend their title. I believe they're the title holders last year, if yep. I'm not mistaken. Um, that's got to be kind of a, a tough pill to swallow. But here they are in the chance uh, with a chance to go to the district championship, championship, uh, and the uh, trophy, and the stakes a little bit bigger uh, when it comes to district championships and as compared to a heritage conference championship. And that's nothing, taking nothing away from a heritage conference championship. But uh, you know the fact that they're probably about the what the fifth seed I'd say in the heritage conference, number two in district six, is a, a testament again to how good the heritage conference was this year. I mentioned there's three Heritage Conference teams remaining uh, between Class A and Class 2A. Uh, two in this Class A bracket. Portage, of course, playing the number one seed here tonight. And uh, the West Shemokin Wolves, a team I get to see a lot as a part of High Top Sports Network. Uh, they were victorious last night in... Uh, their contest, uh, they did. They played Northern Cambria, so they knocked out another Heritage Conference team right there. So now the very, very tough task of playing Phillipsburg Osceola. Phillipsburg Osceola, one of the best teams in the state. I know this because I got to see them last year in the state semifinals against none other than another Armstrong County team that I cover, uh, Freeport, who looks to defend their Whippeal Championship on Saturday. So a lot of good teams uh, out there, and uh, Phillipsburg Osceola maybe the best team in all of District 6, regardless of classification. So a tough task for the West Shemokin Wolves in their game tomorrow. First point there, an errant uh, uh, swing and a point to the Wildcats. Sorry, i got to get the scoreboard up here. i got to reset this. You see right there, the um, Homer Center. They get the ball to her own. They put her in a good position to find her hitters, and that's just not been what, uh, at least in these first two games, be it against Juniata Valley or here so far against uh, Bishop Carroll, um, uh, they've just not been able to really get those, uh, receive the serves well. Here's another one. It's going to be right at Fabin, and you see what happens. If you can't dig that ball out and you can't get it to your setter, um, it's going to be a long night for you. Yeah, I know Homer has done a lot to work with that to figure all that out, so... Definitely a lot of practice put into all of that. Yeah, and, and I will say it's um, they're they're a lot more polished tonight. Are the Wildcats? You know, a couple of mistakes, and you know, I said in that game against Juniata Valley, you can make those kind of mistakes <laughs> against a better team, and they'll they'll take advantage. And luckily for uh, the Wildcats, if they get another point, uh, it didn't come back to bite them. They won that game, and they got to uh, survive in advance. But. Yeah. Uh, Again, very polished here tonight as they are out to a four to nothing lead and Bishop Carroll with another timeout. So I guess more of the same here, Isabel, uh, what we saw in the first set. Yeah. Carroll just not uh, doing a good job receiving these uh, Wildcats service uh, at the service line. And uh, as a result, I said, you're not going to get too far if you can't receive the serve. It's yeah. going to be a, a quick night for you. And uh, Bishop Carroll really behind the eight ball now down a game and trailing four to nothing here in set number two.
want to mention too, we have uh, Flint Kinner on production here. He's wandering around somewhere, tripod in hand. And I see a camera moving. It's always very strange when I'm looking over there and there's a camera moving. I'm wondering how that's happening. But Flint being the hard uh, working guy that he is, trying to make sure you guys out there get to as many good views as you can have. And out of that timeout, Arone with the serve. Here's a good chance for Carroll, but blocked down by mm. Fabin. And also, too, uh, number 14 in on it, uh, Grace Frazier, not to be confused with Frazier Grace, mm -hmm. <laughs> as this <laughs> roster would read. So another point for Homer, up 5 to nothing. But you saw there, Carroll with a good chance there. You got the ball to your setter, a good set. And, but uh, what's the old saying? Uh, the best offense is a good defense? Yep. Defense definitely has a large play involved with all sports. Most definitely. That first point there on the uh, service error by the Wildcats. So side out Bishop Carroll. Kerr. Mary Golden was on the serve. Kerr getting up there for a couple kills in this game. Uh, She's also a big part of all the offense. Absolutely. She's been building. Yeah. Yeah, on, on Monday, it seemed like she was really uh, crucial in the defensive part. You mentioned how important defense is. She had a lot of big digs. And now tonight, kind of starring in the, the offense, getting a couple really important kills. Yeah. Three ball now for Homer. A chance. One of very few lately. Yeah, absolutely. Williams, just a bit long. So a point to... The Huskies, two canines facing off tonight. You got a Husky and a Wildcat. What is a Wildcat? I always wondered. Um. Right? Am I right? Yeah. See? You made I, you think there a little bit. You don't see them very often. <laughs> is it like a real thing, I wonder? Yeah. Oh, like a Wildcat's a thing. Yeah. It's like an animal that lives in the wild. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's a smaller, like, it's kind of like a bobcat. It's like a like feral same cat? Same size. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a cat released into the wild. The point there to Carroll cutting this lead down to three, but killed by Fabin. That's what Homer does. They they uh, they stop stop runs uh, like that. You feel like you're Bishop. If you're Bishop Carroll, you feel like you're getting a little momentum, and all of a sudden, then uh, snatched from you with a big kill by Fabin. I believe it was right. Yeah. She's gonna take the serve now too. Student section for Bishop Carroll getting a little feisty. Is that the they're in the fluorescent colors? Yeah. Looks like it. Maybe what, neon. Yeah, what neon. What goes into that decision, I wonder? I mean, you're uh, I haven't been in high school for <clears throat> way too long, but I feel like we were very lazy about those decisions. We just wore, I think the most exciting thing, I went to Marion Center. The most exciting thing they did was camo night. Yeah. Um, nowadays, there's themes for everything. And, uh, you know, what goes into that, I wonder? Um, neon for playoffs? I don't know. I'm not too sure either. <laughs> <laughs> Another point for the Wildcats. Nine to three, the score. And right back to Carroll with the long serve by Fabin. So nine to four now. Nice block with 29, oh, Emily Rouser, and was that Frazier? I think. I think, yeah, I think. Grace Frazier. Frazier now will. Sophomore and senior. Take the serve for Homer Center. Whoops. 10 to 4, your score here in set number two. Homer already down, or excuse me, up uh, one game to nothing. Working to make it two. If they can win this set, out to a nice start, up by seven points. Frazier will stay at the service line. You know, I, I try to compare this to, you seem like you understand sports well, and if you fall behind 2-0, I'm trying to think what that would equate to in another sport. Like if it's basketball, you know, falling behind two sets to none in, in volleyball, I think is such a difficult thing to face. Yeah. You know, it's such a mental hurdle trying to get over that as Williams gets the kill there. It's definitely really hard to lose two sets and know you only have another to go to regain your points and try to win another set because otherwise it's all over. You're done. Yeah, winning three in a row is difficult, especially um, if it's on the back end like that. You know, Homer, 
That one in. Yeah. But the Wildcats winning uh, 3-0 on Monday against Juniata Valley, and that's one thing. But if you lose those first two sets and you somehow are able to come back and win three in a row, that is a monumental feat, I think. And I try to compare it to other sports. It's almost like being down by, like, what, like 27 in basketball, I feel like. Yeah, definitely. It's, 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 it's a, a hard hill to climb for sure. You definitely have to have a lot of mental fortitude to get through all of that. Yeah, and uh, not let your uh, your head drop. Yeah. Well, nice job there by uh, Alicia Heinrich to <clears throat> swat that one down and side out now. Bishop Carroll. 22, Bryn Costco up to serve. Her serve across, dug out by Fabin. Chance for Williams. That's long. So another point for Carroll, and much like that first set, a little run by Carroll closing the gap. They're down by just five now. See if they can sustain it or if the Wildcats will shut the door. You mentioned Costco. She's oh. tickles the twine there on top and drops it in in front of Kerr, and that's so difficult there. You can't really blame Kerr. Yeah, definitely a tough read to get on to. And a timeout here by Homer Center maybe to – Take a little coach's time out of their own as they trail by, or excuse me, they lead by just four now. I really don't think there's anything that Homer's done. It's just been kind of Bishop Carroll. And like, I guess what I'm saying, not, not any like reason to be alarmed uh, if you're Homer center right now. Just a nice little run and a couple breaks by Bishop Carroll like that serve that you saw a moment ago. But uh, Carroll, give them credit. They have uh, fought back in uh, each of these first two sets. Just falling short in that first one. But a uh, chance here now to break even and see how they fare coming out of the timeout. Again, I want to thank uh, Lady Wildcats Association here at Homer Center for sponsoring today's broadcast along with Bishop Carroll High School. Bishop Carroll High School, a place I'm very familiar with. Uh, my high school time, I played a lot of playoff games and basketball there. My my final game my junior year was there, a heartbreaking defeat to Westmont Hilltop. Never really liked Westmont. Sorry if you're uh, from there. Not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> you, you guys beat me three times in a row in the playoffs. I don't like that. So, I know credit to them. They were, they were a better team each of those nights. But uh, my junior year, a hard loss for sure. Yeah. At Bishop Carroll High School, though. Great little gym to play in. Williams. With the kill. Yeah, that was. She, she has such a knack for getting that ball at the right spot. I don't think yeah. she's the tallest player out there, of course, but uh, certainly got the ups. And um, She's definitely got the strength to put it down. Yeah, for sure. I was saying on, on Monday, it just sounds different coming off her hand. Yeah. Left, I believe. Uh, two hits. So it is now 13 to 14 to 8, excuse me, in favor of Homer Center. Williams with the serve. And... Flint coming back with some pizza. Look at you. Holler at your boy. Oh, I'm good. Thank you. I don't eat on the air. I don't think people would like that too much. But thank you for the offer. Homer with another point there. Williams will stay at the service line. 15-8. And again, you're, if you're uh, Carroll, Homer Center with that timeout, trying to slow momentum, and it seems like it's worked here. Nice dig by Fabin. Her up and with the kill. Again, that's a, a part of her game you didn't see as much of on uh, on Monday here, Isabel. But she's kind of contributing and getting a couple kills here. Yeah. Nice little added bonus for the Homer Center offense. The smell of uh, pizza and nachos now permeating through the booth here at Homer Center High School and Homer Center Live. And into the net. So you say about coaches' timeouts, that's one for sure. Give credit to, to the Homer Center side. Sherry Williams, I believe. Uh, is that Sherry Williams, head coach? Yeah. Good timeout uh, by that lady. Third head coach, I believe, in three years, correct? Yeah. But it's, it's crazy to think, and that just shows you the, uh, the just the volleyball knowledge around here uh, that uh, exists in this program that you really don't lose much each of those years. You, yeah. We go back to back uh, district championships. You win two. Uh, whoa, that one smoked off the hand of Williams a little too much there. But, uh, you know, despite that uh, turnover, you know, it can be tough for some teams. Um, 
Homer Center handling it well, winning back-to-back -back Heritage Conference championships and going to back-to-back -back District 6 championship games. That one just a bit outside on the swing by number 29. Is that Emily, Emily Rouser? Yeah. yeah. Sophomore Rouser getting some run here in this set. And Fairbanks. Yep. Uh, Michaela Fairbanks unable to corral that one, so two straight points now to the Huskies. Serve will remain with Sophie Beckwith. Make it three. Oops. Wrong team. Yeah, I'm not good at multitasking. I'm not mm -hmm. smart enough to do that. Some people are amazing at that. I'm not. So I'm trying to call this and keep score at the same time so the folks out there kept up to date. Not a math guy. <laughs> not good with numbers whatsoever. Ooh, Megan with a nice kill from the back. Yeah, she's one of the better players I've gotten to watch who uh, they don't necessarily have to be close to the net to, to execute a kill well. I think that's kind of a tough skill to have as well. Uh, to kind of still have yeah. that aim, that trajectory, the ability to hit that ball how you want. You Williams. can definitely tell that's been one of her main focuses for getting better is being able to get it anywhere. Now, Williams played basketball this past year, correct, I believe? Yeah. Was she on the team prior years? Oh, yes. Oh, okay. She has, but... Certainly, volleyball it seems like her number one sport. Mm -hmm. Another point to the Wildcats. I believe most of the girls have played basketball. I'll tell you what, too. Uh, basketball and, and volleyball, two sports that are, I think, very – I think it helps to play both those sports if uh, you're serious about them because – Talk about just the leaping ability. Some of the best female basketball players I've gotten to watch over my years of covering sports. Oh, what a save. Great volley between the two teams. But to, and Homer. it'll end with Homer for the point. Wow, that's a backbreaker for uh, BC. You thought you got a point there, but a great save by number 28. Who is uh, not on our roster here? I want to make sure she gets some credit. Libero for Homer. Um, yeah. yeah, it's not the... Olivia Stimbolia? Oh, yep. Yeah. I believe you're right. Yeah, I don't know why the numbers don't want. Might be that Libero jersey. Sometimes that'll uh, that'll change. You might have yeah. a normal uniform, but uh, 21 to 13, your score. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, all right. Sorry, Bear Flint. Bumps you. Well, the Wildcats knocking on a knocking on the door and tough one there by Stabolia. That one getting on her quick and got a football score now, 21-14 in favor of the Wildcats. 15, Alicia Henrik up to serve for Bishop Carroll. Razor to and Kerr up Kerr. with the kill. Yeah, Kerr's been impressive there in the with her net front presence tonight. Again, getting some kills. And you didn't see that as much on uh, Monday, devoting her skill. And you love a player like that who's not gonna, you know, everybody loves to see the big kills and stuff like that. But it's the the digs and those kind of those the dirty work, as I'd like to call it, um, that helps you win big games. And definitely does. Kerr not afraid to do whatever it takes to help her team, but a point there to the Huskies. Who wins in a fight? These feral cats you speak of or a, or a sled dog? Well. I always do uh, mascot matchups. Yeah. It's a fair question. Well, I guess it would depend. <laughs> I guess it would depend. <laughs> I don't know. Several factors that can yeah, play into that. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> Oops. I bet you weren't expecting that to... I was that not. question here tonight. Got to keep you on your toes, Isabel. I did the same to Mr. Palmer there on Monday, so <laughs> I'd be uh, wouldn't be fair if I didn't do the same here. 23-16 side out Homer Center. Kerr, big contributor here thus far in this game. We'll have the service for the Wildcats. Sent across, dug out well. Here's a chance. Deflected, played on.
and point to the Wildcats, who now are at set point on the verge of taking a 2 to nothing lead. Still not out of reach, but uh, the Huskies will have to play pretty much error-free volleyball here to win this set. A little drop shot there, but tracked down by Williams. Chance by Kerr, free ball across. That one crushed up front. Nice job by Emily Olnick, freshman. Got some good tall talent, young talent at that on the Bishop Carroll side that's been showcased here in this semifinal matchup. Olnick is part of that. And another point to Carroll. Nice try there by Stabolia, but the ball will remain with the sled dogs. <laughs> Feral cats are sled dogs, you know? I uh, didn't think those two words were going to be said here today. No, I didn't, but <laughs> seems pretty close between the two. Yeah, when we do games on High Top Sports Network, I uh, typically uh, and a point to Homer. But it's looking like the Feral cats seem to be <laughs> yes, it, doing pretty it, well. Yeah, the question's answering itself for us right <laughs> in front of our eyes is Homer wins the second set 25-18. to 18, And I want to say, did they win 25-17 to 17 in that first set? Or no, I think no, it was 14. No, I, I thought it was 12. Is it 12 or 14? See, this, uh, not only am I bad at math, <laughs> I have about the memory of a goldfish. So <laughs> Homer Center able to jump out to a 2 to nothing lead, and here's that predicament we talked about where I, if you have the mental fortitude and the ability to come back from a 2 to nothing mm -hmm. uh, disadvantage, then you certainly earn, <laughs> earn it. Yeah. And that's the uh, task that the Huskies are facing now here down two games to none. Yeah, it'll definitely be interesting to see how they handle this. Trying to get back at it. You said I, I mentioned earlier about. Um, oops. Oh, there we go. Um, talked about uh, body language and kind of Carol looking a little more kind of down, and you just can't do that. You know? Yeah. You got to stay as up as possible, especially during these times when you're losing by two sets. So a 2-0 lead by the Wildcats. Did you play the 50-50, Isabel? I did not, but I was working it earlier before okay. this. So So you could, uh, if you really wanted to, you could fix it for somebody out there. I yes? mean, I could, <laughs> but I didn't, yeah. for the record. It's a fair competition here in the, in the Homer Dome. We're talking about this venue. It's one of the, I got to say, probably the most unique indoor venue yeah. in terms of basketball courts, volleyball courts in the Heritage Conference. One the only with the dome, if not the only. Is this a dome, though? That's the question, because I think this is a different word. We And listen, I the, the name, it makes sense, because it goes so well with Homer, yeah. Homer Dome. Um, but I think there's a name for this structure where it's like, just there's a curvature to it. Like, the ends are flat. Like, it's yeah. not like this end comes down, and it's curved, too. I mean, again, a conversation nobody expected us to have here today. That's why we're here. Um <laughs> Nonetheless, it's a, a really sweet venue. Yeah. But uh, not none really like it here in the Heritage Conference. No. Most are kind of cookie cutter. I played at Marion Center. That was just sort of very boxy. <laughs> we definitely have much higher ce ceilings, oh, too. Yeah. So gives a bit of an advantage when it comes to shanking the balls a bit too high. That's true. Didn't really think about that. That's true. And um, in volleyball, I think it would probably be the most beneficial. You really don't notice yeah. it, I think, in basketball. Except for the depth perception. It is a little weird playing in here. Mm -hmm. Although I mentioned to Caleb on Monday, 3-0 and in this gym in my career. So mm -hmm. just putting that out there to our Homer friends. Um, but, uh, you know, it's cool because now that the Heritage has grown, you know, you've added so many teams here over the last few years, dating back to 2017 when West Shemokin joined it. Uh, Cambria Heights joining it recently. Portage. Yeah. The two Connemals, Connemal Township, Connemal Valley. Um a lot of those schools have some pretty unique venues. Um, some pretty unique venues. Len Chapel uh, Gymnasium, one of them, a former NBA player from what school in the Heritage? Oh. Trivia question. 
play in the NBA? Um, I'm going to be honest. I don't know. <laughs> you got to throw out a guess. Come on. You got this. Um, it's a newcomer. Yeah, I, I don't really know any of the AI players. Portage. Portage. He played like way back in the day. I didn't uh, know who he was until I went in the, the gym itself and saw his name and the the uh, gym named <laughs> after him to actually start looking him up and figure out who the heck he was. Yeah. Cool story about him. Yeah. Nice job there by Bishop Carroll to, again, get the ball to their hitter in a good position, puts the kill down and side out. 1-1 one, one here in the third set. Homer Center leading 2 to nothing. Dug out by Williams. They even just free balling it across. And we talk about the, ooh, nice save. Good digs. And that one just dropping over top of Fabin. Point to Bishop Carroll in a rare lead here for the Huskies. See what they can do with it. But uh, we're mentioning the growth of the Heritage <laughs> Conference and a guy that's a big part of this school, Jody Rainey, a big uh, contributor to this expansion that we've seen in the Heritage Conference. A little knuckleball there. Great serve by Mary Golden. Fraser up. Can't help but want to call her Fraser Grace now. <laughs> Chance for Fabin. Good pass there. And as a result, oh. Harold puts that one away, and they take a 3-1 lead right there. Pretty obvious, but they're able to pass the ball well and get the ball to their hitters. Their uh, success rate is much, much, much higher. Yeah. Run here early on. Three straight points. Make it four. Four to one. Caleb uh, pointing out to me that the wildcat on the wall over there, uh, not uh, centered. It isn't. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, like look at it on the screen there. It's like definitely a little bit to the right. How about that? You didn't know that. I just taught you something about your own school. I didn't know that. Yep. Yeah, it's uh, and I also think he looks pixelated. Like he's like. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Four to two, the score, and make it five to two. Certainly the best start coming out of the gates of any set for Bishop Carroll right here. Yeah, it's like the tides are turning now. We got to see how Homer deals with digging a bit of a hole. Olivia Gregg with the serve, another freshman on this Carroll squad. Yeah, Carroll's showing some resilience with their backs against the wall, but right there, Megan Williams sending a message to the Huskies. So it is now. Lena Fabin serving. Lefty. Thanks those kind of loopy serves, like high, uh, ar high arcing I've noticed mm. with Fabin. It's uh, not coming in there as fast, but it's wor it, it uh, works. It definitely messes with the mind a little bit to see it go down so slow. <laughs> and it's, it's crazy. I didn't realize this until recently. I feel kind of dumb that <laughs> if you think about left-handed quarterbacks, the ball rotates differently than a right-handed quarterbacks would so when it's spiraling it's actually going the opposite way and you wonder in the same kind of respect in the same vein that when a lefty server is hitting it does it kind of change the the motion of it look a little bit different i could definitely see it doing that. like especially with kind of the arc that uh, fabian gets on it yeah And another point to Carroll. Seven to four. Again, uh, showing some resiliency uh, with their backs against the wall. Number 11, Ali Zabo at the service line. Number one drops in. A little close to the line, but still in. Now back to Williams probably at this point uh, as the Huskies have doubled up the Wildcats eight to four. Again, uh, no, no real cause for concern here right there. Fabian just deciding to let that one go, not a mental mistake, sort of just kind of playing it safe. And I feel like in the last two games I've watched here, uh, yet have the Wildcats had that happen. Usually when they let one go, it's out. So you give them a break there on that one, certainly. I, mean, I think it's more about what the Huskies have been able to do, passing the ball better and, again, getting the, getting the volleyball to their position, making a little bit of a difference here early on. 
Flint having some fun with the joystick. <laughs> Nachos look good. Oh, you got some buff chick dip, huh? All right, I see you. Enjoy yourself. Flint doing an excellent job here for us on the uh, production side. Appreciate his efforts. Eight to four. Your score coming out of the Homer Center timeout. And in to the net. Coach's timeout there by Coach Williams. Side out Homer Center. I'm really fortunate because I said I mostly cover sports here between Indiana and Armstrong County, Butler County as well. Um, but some really, really good quality teams in those uh, areas I just mentioned. You know, you got Homer here who's played in some huge games, looking yeah. for a third straight district championship berth. That one off the block of Homer Center drops in for a BC point. But, uh, you know, West Shemokin, a team with a lot of tradition with that uh, Elderton background. Uh, Armstrong School District, another case of that uh, influence from Elderton past year. is a really prolific program there. Oh, sorry, I got the score wrong. Um, and Freeport, of course, defending state champions. Uh, I think 18 or 19 straight section championships for Freeport. Uh, they're, they're, uh, I like to joke that their section championship streak can vote. <laughs> 19 straight years. And point to the Wildcats. The gap to just three, but uh, we head down to 22 and hop on round 28. And that's a good one. Fabin, great dig, and gets it to Ronan in a good spot. And Kerr drops it in, dug out by Greg. Good Keeping dig. It alive. Nice by, job. Uh, okay. Michaela Fairbanks, yeah. And a great push over there by number seven, Mary Golden. It's always a tough decision whenever you decide to do that instead of trying to, you know, set up a hitter and just instead push it over across and a little bit of no-look move there by Golden. Yeah, definitely have to read where everybody is. You get the side out, put it in the net. Second time they've done that here in this third set. He back to just three. <laughs> Again, you got to avoid those unforced errors. Olivia Stabolia at the service line. Golden with the set. Push across. And uh, that was Williams. She's kind of pointing at uh, her teammate Fairbanks and saying, you know, I got that. Let that one go. Yeah, a little bit of miscommunication there. So the Huskies back up by four. District 6, Class A semifinal near Homer Center Junior Senior High School. Winner will head to Altoona. Her going up and with the kill. Her again. Doing a good job at the net. Her a little uh, more shorter in stature compared to, you know, a Fabian or a Williams, but uh, she can get up and really punish the ball as well whenever yeah. she gets uh, she gets up there. Nice block by Fabin and Frazier. Saved opportunity there, but just ran out of space. Did number five, uh, Sophia Bequette. And uh, gap starting to close. Excuse me, Beckwith. I apologize, Sophia's name. But uh, good hustle there, but again, ran out of room. Side out Homer. Rome with the serve there a moment ago. And a good kill there. Called her name a few times, Olivia, or excuse me, uh, yeah, Olivia Gregg with the kill. Another freshman on this very young Carroll team. Certainly a team to watch for here over the coming years. 9 to 12, your score. Williams, a rare mistake by number 31. Ball will remain with the Huskies. 13 to 9, your score. Chance for Fabin. That one. Great kill. Yeah, great kill indeed. Off the hands of uh, Beckwith and out of play. So side out Homer. 13 to 10. Again, Homer's passing. When they get the ball. Uh, 
They, they receive those serves as well as they have here for most of the night. Uh, Arone, rarely does she uh, miss with her, her passing. Yeah. Another good block by Homer. Yeah, and we've uh, not enough credit, I feel like, um, I'm given to number 14, Grace Frazier. <laughs> or Frazier Grace. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Okay. We know her name's Grace Frazier, but uh, funny on the roster. But, yeah, she's been excellent, too, there, combining with Fabin and make that wall. You know, her uh, her presence felt on defense for sure. Yeah. Great job there by Williams, kind of sneaking it down the line where no one was. Down by just a point now, Isabel. So these uh, Wildcats showing that championship fight. I want to say they trailed by as many as, what, six or five? I can't remember now. I should probably write this down. I don't even have a pencil. Now we're tied up at 13. Let's see whenever Jackie Costco, head coach of the Huskies, calls a timeout as Homer's. On a little run. Oh, thank you, Flynn. He brought a mechanical pencil. Though I, I write too hard for these things. Yeah. And there you go. And there is the timeout. I called it. And Homer storming back here in set number three. Down by, we know for sure they were down by as many as five here, Isabel. But, uh, again, showing that uh, championship might not letting their heads drop. And they come back and reclaim a 14 to 13 lead. Yeah, they've been able to stay up as much as possible. Seems like the Huskies are getting a little low ever since they started to close the lead. Flint making a voyage down that very pirate shippy kind of ladder mm -hmm. we have here, this wooden ladder. <laughs> it's definitely a little risky going up. Yeah. It's nice, though, having a crow's nest. There's not too many of them in the Heritage Conference. Yeah. Um, I mentioned my old modern Marion Center. They put this, they got these little poles in the in the in the bleachers, and it's a little table that you set it on. And this is nothing against my home school. I love love uh, my time as a stinger. Yeah. So I always say we weren't the bee, we were just the stinger itself. <laughs> but uh, you know, this is a great little venue, of course, as we mentioned earlier. But uh, a great little spot to catch the game, get kind of a a great view of the action. Kerr with the serve here coming out of the timeout. Let's see if the Bishop Carroll timeout can help rally the troops. That one out of play. It was on the uh, wrong side of that antenna. So Kerr will remain at the service line. And the Wildcats with their first two-point advantage here now, Isabel, of this third set. Oh, what a serve there by Kerr. And Williams. Right off the block. Yeah, that was a good wall, too, really. There have been quite a few of those between Williams and Kerr. Yeah, and you know what? It's What do you do if you're Bishop Carroll there? I mean, you're in great position. You had two players basically right up on the net, just too good by yeah. Williams. Not too much you can do to help that. That one out of play near the judge here in this backside. 17-13, so talk about a swing. Down by, we know, as many as five, and now they're up by four, so Homer Center just uh, make it up by, where are you going there? Five now. Yep. Keep going up. At least a 10-point swing, we know. But, uh, again, a lot of teams can't recover from starting slow. Homer, the exception to that. Fabin. Right over the net. And we've seen that a couple times with that dig. Uh, whenever BC's trying to return that serve, uh, just kind of gets a little too long, and there's Fabin waiting for it, and she can yeah. make you pay. It's a great place to get some extra points. And she doesn't uh, she doesn't miss when she gets them, does yeah. Elena Fabin. Chance now here. And a great dig. There's that high ceiling helping him out. Williams with a great save. Over. And Kerr does, and they get a point out of it. That's a backbreaker right there. <laughs> Isabel, man, oh, man, that's a good rally. In the... Yeah, the fans are going a bit wild. Wow. Boy, oh, boy, if you're PC, how do you recover from that one? 20 to 13. Homer on a roll now, down by five in this set. 
Nice idea there by Golden with the push across. A nice dig by around. Chance now, dug out, but too hard. Allie Zabo with a big strike there. Zabo, that middle hitter, called her name quite a few times here tonight. 20 to 14, side out BC. Jump serve across by Greg. Williams with a chance. That one smoked down the line. 21-14, a football score once again as we had in set number two. It just seems like every time that BC has a chance to get on a roll, Homer's there to shut the door. Yeah. Now Fabin at the service line. Lefty, a little more straight uh, line hit there by Elena Fabin. Chance for Williams in the net, saved by Fabin. Set by Roan, back to Williams. That one's gonna drop in. Another comeback. Boy, oh boy. This is resembling that first set. We saw it really close when it was in the, uh, about like that 12 point yeah. range, both teams. And then Homer just took off from there. And this is very much like that, up by eight. And they trailed by as many as five in this set. Bishop Carroll wants to come back. They got to start here. Yeah, you'd, uh, Homer needs just three points to claim a victory here in the semifinal. There's a little bit long on that dig by Homer, a rare instance of that. BC unable to capitalize. Here's a chance saved by Frazier. That one is not going to be able to stay. Nice effort by Arone, but point to BC. And uh, you mentioned it there, Isabel, that uh, if you're going to go, you got to go now. And BC getting a couple consecutive points here. Taking your advice. And Williams. Again, just in the middle of the net. That's certainly, I think, been the biggest problem tonight for the Huskies, trying to return those serves. And when they do, you put it by the net, you got either Fabin or Williams or even Kerr. And again, we give credit to a Frazier. She's been good up there, too. Yeah. Just They're just ready for them. Yeah, absolutely. Big swing there. And good Someone else stayed alive. The defense tonight by the Wildcats. There's another nice dig by Fabin. Williams into the net. Tell you what, uh, the uh, Huskies earned that one, but the Wildcats were making every play imaginable. 23-17, your score. Served now by Costco, the yeah. senior for this Bishop Carroll team. Chance now, hit. I'm going to say well, two hits. So a chance, they're hanging around. That's what you got to do. Yeah, the they're definitely working. Down by five, but not, uh, again, not completely out of it just yet. Chance by Roan. Rouser with the hit there, but played on. That That'll one, be out. A long, and we are at match point. Homer center one point away from a berth in the District 6 championship game for a third straight Last year. Last chance for Bishop Carroll to try and get it back, but doesn't seem like it. And nowhere to go, and that one's out of play, and Homer center wins it. They'll be there Saturday. That's all she wrote, Isabel. That was a excellent performance by the Wildcats. They made these... Huskies pay for the mistakes they made. Definitely a devastating loss for them. And, uh, you know, credit to these Huskies, a young team. They're going to be a team to watch for here in the years to come. We were mentioning names, and when you look a couple rows over at the grades, uh, that a lot of these you know, players that, that were front and center in this game, we're looking at yeah. freshmen, sophomore, just three seniors on this team. And give a shout-out to those seniors, of course. Mary Golden, yep. uh, the setter, a senior, her final game in the – Husky uniform. Also, too, uh, Alicia Heinrich, the middle hitter, her final go. And then last but not least, um, Bryn Costco, 
the three seniors that uh, played their final game here tonight. <laughs> and hopefully be able to pick it up for the next couple of years. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, good experience here, as you said, tonight facing a team that's been there, done that. And at times, you know, they, they played point to point for point uh, with these Wildcats. But, again, Wildcats, a little too much experience, a little too much consistency, and that's why they've prevailed here three games to none against Bishop Carroll in this District 6 semifinal. They will now advance to play either Portage or – the number one seed out of this bracket, West Branch, on Saturday, as you mentioned, Isabel, in Altoona. Yeah. I believe it's Altoona High School, if I'm not mistaken, where it um, is. I can see it being there. It's been yeah. there before. Where the heck else would it be? <laughs> <It's in Altoona. laughs> yeah. They're going to play it in some park. But, uh, anywho, um, thank you so much for, for uh, hopping on and, yeah, and providing no your – did an excellent job. <laughs> Tell Caleb uh, that you uh, gave him a run for his money. I think I'm going to give you the uh, the nod, though. <laughs> Sorry, Caleb. Uh, no. no, Caleb's great. He was awesome. <laughs> really appreciate you guys. And uh, glad. hope you enjoyed it and uh, glad to do it with you. Yeah. Um, also want to thank today's sponsors. Um, of course, Bishop Carroll High School stepping up and making sure that wherever you may be tonight, um, that uh, you guys were able to see it wherever you may be. And also, to the Lady Wildcats Association. <laughs> Homer Center volleyball program. Awesome uh, group of people there. They helped us out a lot two years ago uh, on High Top Sports Network when they uh, broadcast the games. Uh, made sure that these girls got the coverage and uh, people got to check them out wherever they may be. And that's a huge thing today. You know, it can't always be at every every game. There's so much distance uh, to travel, and that can be tough. And uh, whenever these organizations step up and make sure that you're able to watch these games wherever you may be, that's huge. So make sure you thank uh, the folks at the – at Bishop Carroll High School for their contributions, along with the Lady Wildcats Association uh, from Homer Center. I uh, want to again uh, thank Kirk Kudrzyk, the assistant print, or assistant athletic director here. Just super helpful, awesome dude. Great working with Kurt. Um, always nice to hey. come here and the support of these folks whenever they want to execute a good broadcast. Um, much appreciated there. Um, also want to thank... Uh, Jody Rainey again for helping organize this. So we here on Homer Center Live uh, could bring you this broadcast of this semifinal matchup between the Homer Center Wildcats and the Bishop Carroll Huskies. Um, my, uh, my final thoughts on this one, you know, Homer Center looked a little rusty, I think, and I, I think it's fair to call that what it is now. A little rusty in that game on Monday against Juniata Valley. They, of course, had the bye. Didn't get to play in that Heritage Conference Championship, so a little bit of downtime for the Wildcats. Uh, but maybe a little bit of time, too, to uh, let the emotions simmer a little bit uh, and get the little chip on their shoulder. They have a bigger prize in mind, and they will get a chance to play for it on Saturday, and that, of course, the District 6 Class A Championship. Uh, they played in that game two years, uh, the two years prior, but uh, fell short, looking to finally break through here now in 2023. So Homer Center victorious here in three games over the Bishop Carroll Huskies on Homer Center Live. Uh, my name is Joe Rhodes. Again, that was Isabel Rowland. Helped me out on color, doing a great job, as I uh, mentioned. Great to Homer Center has this program to let these students get access to trying to try their hand in broadcasting, and I think it's a super good thing. And we uh, obviously my role I'm with High Top Sports Network broadcast there, and uh, we always welcome that opportunity. Uh, but uh, this game, a great opportunity to uh, lend our expertise, if you even want to call it that, to these uh, student athletes and uh, let them get on the mic and see what they can do and let them enjoy it. So love doing that, but. Uh, I think that about wraps it up again. Thank you to Bishop Carroll High School for their support today. Uh, thank you to the Lady Wildcats Association and Homer Center and uh, both schools, their uh, administrators, officials, uh, for their support in bringing you today's broadcast. Um, for one final time, for Isabel Roland, Flint Kinner in production, uh, my name is Joe Rhodes. You guys have a great rest of your week, and may no train pass you by.